after we study normal distribution, inverse normal distribution, standard normal distribution, and finding the area under a normal curve and uh, standardize and a score uh, on x value. So we are going to bring everything together into one comprehensive example. So in this example, we are going to talk about SAT score. So SAT score, uh, you need to go to college, right? So before you graduate from your high school, you have to take uh, SAT. So SAT English, SAT Math, and then SAT Writing. So how good you are, other than your GPA, you also need to show your SAT score to your college to demonstrate how good you are in academic. So in this problem, we are going to talk about SAT score. So the SAT is an exam used by colleges and universities to evaluate undergrad applicants. So the test score is normally distributed. The mean is 600 and the standard deviation is 80. So we take a student randomly. I want to find the following probability. So I just said that the score follows normal distribution. So mu is equals to 600 and the standard deviation sigma is equals to 80. So in the first problem, I pick a student randomly. I want to find the probability that this person's score is at most 510. At most means no more than 510. So I wrote at most and that x is less than or equal to 510. x is a random variable that follows normal distribution. So if you want to see how I write it, so we write x follows normal distribution with mean equals to 600 and then standard deviation is equals to 80. That's how people write that. And then back to this problem. So the first step that we have to do is we have to standardize the 510 using this formula. So we write a probability that z is less than or equal to. By the way, every time you start writing z, that means you just initiate the standardization process. So you take the number I gave you, subtract the mean, divide it by 80. Of course, we do this in our calculator. So z is less than or equal to. So start with a parenthesis, 510 minus 600, and then divide it by 80. So make sure you use a parenthesis because you have to perform the subtraction first. Without the parenthesis, the z is wrong, and therefore the probability is also incorrect. So we have a negative 1.125. There is no need to round. And then what does that mean in, in picture? So that means we have a standard normal curve. So standard normal curve. We have zero right in the middle because that is the mean. And then negative 1.125 less than. Less than means we are looking for the area on the left hand side. So this one we have to use a command called normal CDF. So normal. CDF. How do you find the normal CDF? So look at the red box. You hit second and then you hit worse. So you hit the second and then you hit worse. And then number two is normal CDF. CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. Cumulative means finding the area. The first option is PDF. PDF is only gives you a point on the curve only gives you a point it has nothing to do with area if you want area you must get cdf right for normal distribution so second was normal cdf if you're using a newer calculator like a ti84 plus ce or c then you will get a manual but in my calculator and most of the older calculator you will see a normal cdf command on the home screen so if that is your calculator, then you have to do the following. So first you have to input the lower limit, which is the left end of the curve that is negative infinity. So negative infinity, the upper limit is negative 1.125. The mean is zero, standard deviation is one. So mean is zero, standard deviation is one because we are doing normals, we stand standard normal. Standard normal means the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. So how do you type negative infinity? So to type negative infinity, you have to type negative one first. So type negative one, the negative key is between the decimal point and the enter. So that is a negative key, not minus. Minus is not going to work. Minus will return a syntax error. So negative, negative one. And then uh, negative infinity. So in our calculator, we 
take that as negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power, which is negative 1 followed by 99 zero. So that number is big enough for negative infinity. So how do we type the base 10? To type the base 10, you have to type an E. So how do you type the E? Do you see that there is a E uh, right above the comma? Find the comma key. The comma is right above 7. Do you see that there is a double E? So it is in either in yellow or in blue, right? So you hit second, and then you hit that blue key, and then you will get an E, and then you type 99. So that is E negative infinity. And then for the older calculator, you have to type the comma yourself, and then negative 1.125, and then part is zero is the mean. Standard deviation is one. So once you press enter, then you get a probability that is 0.1. 13.03. So that is your probability using the normal CDF. So this 0 0.1303 is this area. And then let me show you that there is another way to get the probability in one probability command. So what is the benefit of doing that? The benefit of doing that is if you are do if you don't need to show any work, for example, you are doing homeworks and exams on online, you don't need to show any work, then this is a very good sk skills to learn. So that skill is normal. CDF, you start at in negative infinity, right? You don't need to standardize to get the negative 1.125. You take the 510 from the problem. So that means you are taking numbers before standardization. The mean is 600, the standard deviation is 80. That gives you this probability in one command. So if you do this pink command, that means you are trying to get the answer without showing a single line of work. So let me show you that as well. Second wash, normal CDF from negative infinity. And then negative, oh no, no, negative five, 510, comma, and then 600, comma, 80, close parenthesis, see, you get the same probability in one command. You don't need to show any work at all. So this is a great skills to learn if you are doing exams and homeworks online. But if you are required to show all the work, then you have to show all the work then. All right, let's take a look at part B. So part B, we have uh, at least 750. So as I scroll down, you won't see the problem anymore. So now is a good time to take a screenshot. So B is probability that X is greater than or equal to 750. Oh, by the way, the at least in the parentheses, the at least is the same thing as no less than. I should type no less than in the problem, but I type at least twice. Okay, so I show you that right here. At least is the same thing as no less than. All right, so we go ahead and do the standardization. So that is Z greater than or equal to 750 minus uh, 600 divided by 80. So that is probability. C is greater than or equal to 750 minus 600 divided by 80. So that is 1.875. We don't need to round. And then the area is right here. Standard normal, zero in the middle, 1.875, greater than or equal to, so that is the area we are looking for. Then we do normal, CDF, we go from 1.875 to pass to infinity, the mean is equal to zero, the standard deviation is equal to one. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous video regarding how we do the normal CDF or the screenshot or the little practice, you should watch the previous video because in when you get to this point, I assume that you already understand how to standardize. You know how to do all the um, inverse normal distribution, normal distribution, those stuff, because this is, we are trying to put everything we discussed before into one example. All right, we do second floors. And then we go to our normal CDF, 1.875 to positive infinity. Oh. 1e right second comma and then 99 and then mean is zero standard deviation is one so that gives you um 0 0.03 0 0.04 so this is my probability that is the area 
of this region. And then what about the one step? The one step is you do normal CDF and then you go from 750 to passive infinity. The mean is 600, standard deviation is 80. So this is one step to get the answer. So let's do that. Second bars. Okay, the, this calculator is not responding all the time. Second bars. Normal CDF from 750 to uh, passive infinity, one second comma nine nine, and then mean is 600, standard deviation is 80. So we have 0 0.0340 for all. By the way, one thing that I have to remind you is if you approximate the Z, there is a minor difference of using the shortcut and this command. If you approximate the Z, the reason is this one, if you approximate, you accumulate a little bit of round of error if you approximate the Z, right? So don't worry about the difference. As long as you keep three or four decimal places, you will be okay. So that would be a B and then C is between 500 and 650. So let's switch to C. So C between, so we have a 500 and then six, oh, X x and then 650 so first we standardize that so we take a 500 minus the mean divided by standard deviation so since we initiated the standardization process so that will be the c 650 minus 600 divided by 80 so we have um 500 minus 600 divided divided by 80 and then uh, 650 minus 600 divided by 80, negative 1.25 Z and then 0 0.625. So this one is the standardized score. The negative and this positive, they are called standardized score. Okay. And then the 500 and 650, they are called the raw score. And then draw a graph, standard normal curve, and then zero is right in the middle, negative 1.25, and then positive 0 0.625, and this is the area that we are looking for. And then that is normal CDF from negative 1.25 to positive 0 0.625, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. We use zero and one is because we are used doing standard normal, see, all right? Second, VARS, normal CTF, negative 1.25, positive 0 0.625, that means zero standard deviation is one, then we have 0 0.6284. So that is the area between those two cut, and then the shortcut is normal CTF, we go from 500 to 650, the mean is 600, the standard deviation is 80. This is one step to give you the answer. Of course, I will show you how to do it. Second was normal CDF, 500 comma 650 comma 600 comma 80. Again, if you're using an older calculator, you see a menu, then you don't need to type the comma yourself. See, you get the exact same thing. All right, so that would be a D and then uh, that would be a C and then D is no more than 300. So no more than, so we are moving on to D. D is no more than the opposite, the, I mean the inequality of the opposite of more than is less than or equal to 300. So that is the same thing as at most 300. So this one you standardize, you take 300 minus the mean divided by standard deviation in this type of problem, don't worry about the problem. The only thing I can change is the number. So every time you solve a problem like this, you have to go through this process. Subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation. There is really no tricks. The only thing I can change is the inequality symbol and the mean and the standard deviation. So the numbers are changing. The technique is not changing at all. And then the Z. So we have 300 minus 600 divided by 80. So you, you type your uh, parentheses, right? Because you have to perform the subtraction first. And then 
zero, negative 3.75, and then this is the area that we are looking for, so that is normal CDF from negative infinity to negative 3.75, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one because we are doing standard normal, second class normal CDF from negative infinity, which is negative one, the E is second comma, nine nine, negative 3.75, don't use minus, zero and one. So this one, do you see that there is a A point A and then an E negative zero five? So this is a scientific notation. 8.84, I keep two decimal places and then times 10 to the negative five power. So this is the same thing as 8.84 and then the 10 to, to the negative five, that means you move the decimal point five steps to the left. So that is e equal to 0 0.40884. In this type of probability, we treat that as something very close to zero. And then what is this called? This is called scientific notation. You have made it to this far I expect you to understand what scientific notation is. If you don't understand scientific notation, you don't know how to read this type of number, you can search scientific notation on my channel. I make a, a few videos to explain how to write scientific notation and what is scientific notation mean. You don't need to look 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 for a book, uh, just search, just search uh, for a video on my channel. I do have a video explaining scientific notation, all right? But all I need, need you to understand is every time you see a numbers like that, just make sure that probability is very, very close to zero. That's all you have to know, all right? And then uh, what about the shortcut? The shortcut, I always do that in a different color. So that is normal CDF. So that would be from negative infinity to 300, the mean is uh, 600, the standard deviation is 80 because every single one of these number is before standardization. So of course the mean must be 600, the standard deviation must be 80. This is one step to get to the final answer. All right, let's go take a look. We do second verse, normal CDF, negative one, second comma, second comma 99 nine. the mean and and uh, upper limit is 300 the mean is uh, 600 the standard deviation is 80 then you get the exact same probability all right and then in part e i ask a question the question says okay if i give you this is there a difference between using less than or equal to you versus less than the answer is no difference what is the reason? The reason is x is a continuous random variable. So in continuous random variable, I don't care what the distribution is, uniform distribution, normal distribution, as long as x is a continuous random variable, then we don't care about the equal. All right, if x is a discrete random variable, then we do care about the equal. All right, so that is the end of this video. In the next video, I will show you some percentile problem. They are extremely important in uh, analyzing score. So make sure you watch the previous video. Do you think I, t I did a good job in uh, teaching this? Do you think my instruction is helpful to your learning? If so, let me know in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video to your friend. Appreciate your help as always. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing out.